Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Like many other mechanical modeling programs, Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology 2, the second release of Siemens PLM's direct modeling package, comes with a set of basic analysis features. But the advantage here, I think, is in what you can do after your analysis to adjust the part using synchronous technology, or what you might do beforehand to prepare the part for analysis. Let's start a new design study under the Simulate tab. The standard procedure is fairly easy to follow. If you do everything the way the ribbon bar menu is set up, you'd essentially be completing all the steps necessary, ultimately ending up with a little green light that tells you you're ready to roll. Here's a fairly simple assembly. Let's see what happens when you apply forces from the top to simulate someone pushing this lever down with force. So I'm going to pick a surface to apply the force, then specify the volume of the force. I really like how I can simply adjust the size, color, and density of arrows displayed to represent the force. That way, if I happen to have more than one force, I can distinguish the stronger one from the insignificant one. In addition to fixing a part permanently as if it's glued to a surface, I can also let the part slide along a certain surface. So, I'm going to specify that this handle is going to slide along this flat surface on the rod. Next, I use the connector to let the software figure out how the two parts in the assembly are connected. You can define the connection manually if you'd like, but for basic connections and mating conditions, I find that the software's guesswork is pretty much dead on. Then comes meshing. Here, I have the option to specify the type of mesh I want, not just the density of the mesh network. For this, I'll just pick the default conditions and pick a fairly coarse mesh network to keep the analysis running quickly. Well, everything is pretty much ready, so I'm going to hit Solve. And here is the result in full animation. You can choose to see displacement, maximum shear, Vaughn stress results, and so on. And if you choose to, you can probe specific points in the model to see what exactly happens. In addition to studying parts that are fixed, as if they are glued to a certain surface, you can also study rotating parts. Now, because you are in a direct modeling environment, if you want to suppress a feature like blends, you can simply delete them without worrying about messing up your parametric history. And if you need to add volume to make a part more durable, you can thicken it fairly easily by dragging its faces. Same goes for adjusting holes or deleting them altogether. All these quick actions might come in handy if you want to mesh a part to a very fine degree before you run analysis, because every unnecessary curve, hole, or boss significantly increase meshing time and solving time. And if, along the way, you get lost and need tips, you should check the text prompts in the prompt bar below, which will tell you what you need to do next. In the next installment of this series, we'll look at mechanical movement simulation in the assembly environment. For now, let me just leave you with a few results from my analysis runs, just because they are colorful and I thought you might enjoy watching them. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine, hoping all your days revolve around a stress-free environment.